started. Okay, so um, welcome to the second half of today. Uh, Anton Millet will start with a description of the proof um, of the Picos W conjecture. And as we did in the morning, uh, we'll have a break in about an hour, and then we'll uh, resume with something a bit more technical for those who want to continue. Okay, so Anton. So um, let me start with uh, this uh, algebra, which is algebra H2. And the picture you should have in mind is that there is, uh, let's say, R2 or, or C2. And uh, we have, it has a symplectic form. We write some sign of this. And that makes uh, functions into a Poisson algebra. On bracket, and uh, explicitly you have you have the functions, and then you write. Um, okay, to get it right in the notation, I think to do this. And X minus X. Okay. So um, this so functions become the algebra. So this and more precisely, um, okay. So we will look at polynomial functions. So polynomials in this way okay. the algebra. This is uh, with a uh, this bracket, this, this, this. Um, there is a little bit slightly different point of view, but equivalent. Uh, alternatively, if you have a function, you can form the corresponding Hamiltonian vector field. So if this x y, then um, the Hamiltonian is given by the same formula basically. Now, like this. Right. We have Tx and Ty. Right. This is and precisely how uh, this function x on another, another function, if it is. Uh, you want to compute the Poisson vector. And then it turns out that uh, the, the, the commutator of two Hamiltonians is also Hamiltonian of the Poisson vector. Uh, this is basic uh, standard thing in the symplectic job. But you can just plug it in and verify. Okay, so now, uh, okay, there is this geometric description of this algebra, but we don't, we're not going to see it in this description. We are just going to see, we will see it abstractly as a, uh, as some writer. So I write here definition. But this was the picture on the right. And on the left, I will write definition. Definition. We have it's a uh, it's H two is a Lie algebra with basis D and N and the commutator. <coughs> so basis D M N where M and N go over non-negative integers. And the commutator is the two generators with M, M and prime and prime is given by the 
So I need to write the determinant of the two vectors, which is and then I write D and I have M plus M prime minus one comma space and plus M prime minus one. So that's the definition of the layout graph. With the convention that D is zero if the index is it is negative. Yeah. So let's uh I don't know some initial things about this algebra. Doesn't matter. Depending on the answer. The region. the region is that um so it's it's always like this in symplectic geometry. If you have some function, uh, I do um Take some function of a function, then they will pass on from it. But more explicitly, let's say that uh, so one x x squared and so on, which corresponds to d m zero, and this um, form a commutative subalgebra. And one y y square and so on also form uh, this corresponds to t zero n also form a commutative about it. And another interesting thing, and we were pointing out at this moment already, that uh, d two zero d one one D zero two form uh, as of up to some scaling, maybe some some way you have to take one half. Okay, so we want so we can compute explicitly D one one D zero and the determinant here equals two and we get D to zero, then D one one D zero two is minus two D zero two and finally D zero two D to zero. Now here is where you see that I need some correction because it's four four times D one one. If it was a in SL2, it would be simply there would be no form. So, so it means I just have to divide this by 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 two. It's still SL2. Oh. <laughs> it's the same amount, but it's just not the standard base. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, I like this algebra, and the main so expectation. So it should act sort of controls many interesting things. <laughs> and here I don't really even know uh, what is this statement. <laughs> what is it in the what expectation means or so <laughs> <laughs> so I this is I this I can't say that I can just Conversation with Rosansky explains that if you some invariants in mathematics should be thought of as some kind of physical theory evaluated on something times C2. And that's why you get the symmetries of C2 acting on what you want to do. And okay, so, so I, I want to have some. There's certain variations, so variations of this algebra, and I'm to uh, let's see. So we can also take 
uh, C star times C. Uh, so replace C times C by C star times C, which is also the tangent bundle of the multiplicative group. Or, or you can have two times two copies of C star. But they are also symplectic. And therefore, they produce algebra, Lie algebra, in the same kind of way. And the difference is that sort of similar. C star and C star has the character magnitude symplectic. Right? Yeah. There are other kinds of symplectic. They can be a subset of the symplectic. Right? I used to think about this as having a certain canonical symplectic part. Uh, so natural. The X over X, which we have some denominators, right? Right, right. So this will have, exactly. So this will have, for instance, DX over X, which is over exactly. Y. Okay. And that's why it will introduce some difference in some correction in the, in the formula. So, so the commutator will look like. So it's the same, the same determinant, but afterwards you will have um, D n plus n prime, n prime minus one in the case of uh, C star times C, uh, or it will be simply the sum for the second case. Okay, so uh, the difference is that you don't have in the first case we had minus one in both places, but now it can be just minus one in one place or no minus one. And this is sounds uh, it can be a little looks like this minor thing, but it's not, it's not, it's very important. So makes them very different. <laughs> and for example, other algebras have names. Hamiltonian vector fields. No, just from the letter H2, I don't know which is one used. Oh, maybe yes. Maybe it is very but I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. So there is this relation, there is a map between C and C star, which is given by exponential. And then it sort of turns, makes them kind of isomorphic. Isomorphic, but only when that exponential can be a come kind of well defined. Uh, what is that mean? What's that? The algebras are isomorphic. Well, they're not really isomorphic, they're different algebras, but sometimes you, you should think that. When, for instance, you have a representation of one algebra, one algebra, and you can define that exponential. Um, Sorry, uh, yes. what, do you, what does it mean? You sometimes you can say something you cannot. And what is x in quotes? It's not the same as x, which is always well defined. Right, but you see, it doesn't send polynomials into polynomials. And so, well, one example is about some. Okay. So, if you think about, yeah, let's first introduce some. So we call call the algebra for uh, C two rational. C star times C trigonometric. C star times C star elliptic. Okay. 
And um, what I mean, the meaning is of this. So, for instance, if you have um, let's let's try let's denote by x the exponential of all. Yeah, I didn't prepare it, so, so. so let's introduce this change of coordinates. And then uh, we know that sort of, for instance, the trigonometric uh, algebra has this operation corresponding to x to the k, and it corresponds to, and then what is it? Uh, Corresponds to the vector field. Okay, x to one k d dy, right? Make a trigonometric version. On the other hand, in the rational, so then you do the substitution, then you have to write it as the k times x of k x d dy. And so you can write it as sum k to the n plus one x to the n over n factorial d dy. So, so if you can make sense of this infinite sum, for instance, maybe the operators. So okay, then to complete the formula, mm -hmm. sum k to the n plus one over n factorial uh, d this is x on formal vector or complex one from zero and that will be this so imagine if you have so if you have a rational represent, a representation of a rational algebra and this infinite sum makes sense, then we can also define the. You should try to define the action of that by, by using the formal rules. So, so yeah, I don't know. This, I don't know. I can prepare very precise statements. Just think another level of ideas. Okay. Okay. Okay, let's now turn to something more. So I'm going to um so I want I was saying that I want this algebra to act on in interesting things. And for me, uh sort of the motivation came from the following. So example. So we have to consider uh, a t and n plus one. That is a torus torus node. For instance, take uh, t three four. And then you have. So how to draw it? You are going to draw the node. I have to do this uh, wrapping around three strands four times. And then I connect the hands. Okay, this is alternatively, you can also draw a torus and start drawing some line, which kind of wraps around uh, three times this way, four times this way. So, um, and it's for this, talk. so there is this family of nodes, one node for every integer, positive integer. And then uh, we compute certain invariant called uh, triply graded for one of Brzezinski homology. Graded. And uh, 
Um, and we restrict to certain parts. Let's see, no, not this. So, so this is what I think the triply graded vector space or generally yeah, for every node, it is a triply graded vector space. And um certain part means you uh, only take degree zero part with some gradient, but uh has this explicit description by uh by Gorski and Cook and Tom. But you um is given a source. So you start with writing polynomials in in x1 to xn, y1, yn. And then you take divide by the ideal of uh, the ideal generated by uh, symmetric SM symmetric polynomials of uh, positive degree. Yeah. So you don't want to generate the ideal by constant polynomial, but uh, that will make it very interesting. But you uh, divide take all symmetric polynomials. So for instance, polynomials which go for this. Symmetric in X, X and in Y separately? Uh, in, in, no, not separately, diagonal. Like for instance, this kind of expression is symmetric, but yeah, so like this. Yeah, so well, I don't know. The, the transposition to any permutation can use X and Y simultaneously. Simultaneously. So this is also called uh, uh, diagonal harmonics. This is good by Heyman and. Uh, yeah, and uh, Heyman proved. Garcia. Garcia. Garcia and Heyman studied this and they proved that. Dimension equals uh, n plus one to the n minus one, and I, together with uh, Eric Carlson, put the, the shuffle conjecture, which gives the character of this vector space as a as an, as an representation, which is not. But somehow, I told this beauty cut around on the result. Yeah, this that's right. This is all related to QT cut. But is that a, a QT polynomial without it being the SM actual? Mm. No, it's, it's a certain uh, part there, an uh, anti invariant part. Right, I don't think it's the dimension. So it's related to shuffle conjecture to QT at the ones. But uh, for this discussion, what is important is to notice that there is a structure which uh, I think no one has used to study this uh, vector space, is namely the, al the algebra H2. So, so the claim is that so for observation uh, H2, the rational one. Uh, Right. And then, uh, so I tell you how it generator acts. Migrating. In, in X, in a degree in X, in degree in Y. Uh, so H2 acts by, so D and N of some F equals, and then um, the usual, if you have a real algebra on you know, some vector space, you can ex extend this, you can construct action on the tensor power of the vector space. So you, from this idea, you see that you should simply apply the differential operator in, in each coordinate. So you write sum, one, two, uh, oh, I have, 
again made this mistake, which I always keep doing that I denote by n two things. Let's now call this i and j. And k will be from one to n. And then you write the corresponding operator in each pair of variables. So um, you will have d dx is coefficient uh, j x to the i by j minus one. And then you put k here. Minus i j x to the i minus one. D D Y K. Okay, so now um, this is a certain differentiation. Oh, I see there's not really visible. Uh, okay, now. Is the J uh, Y K? I and J are fixed. Uh, and and that's that's for the second part is I Y K G. Oh, I. No, I. That's I, right. I, I, yeah. You see, I, I, I differentiated this monomial with respect to X, and then I wrote D over D Y. And I differentiated. But this. I, I, I cannot see the difference between I and uh, J. Yeah. I mean, so the first one is a G. G. This is J, and this yeah. is I. Okay. Yeah, in my handwriting, they are basically the same. Convenient. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there is this highly non trivial vector space of this dimension, and and the, I have this operator section. So it, it easily checks that the circle is symmetrical. Right, because it, it um, uh, so the ideal generated by, right, it, 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 applying this operator to any symmetric polynomial, not diagonally symmetric polynomial, gives you again diagonally symmetric polynomial because manifestly this operator is symmetric. And that's why you can check that uh, it also preserves the ideal generated by. by Yes, because it's a differential greater of degree one. So uh, that's the instance um, of the action of H2, and together with uh, with Worski and Hoganham. I uh, produce some some operators uh, for arbitrary nodes. Uh, that should be, we expect them to be satisfy this algebra relations, but we don't know. Uh, so, um, what does with mean? You mean you do a spare paper or this paper and they're all others? Um, it's okay, three people. Three people. Okay, thanks. Yes, okay. Since you have any notions of yeah. that. When we don't prove relations. But it's sort of it's some extension, some uh uh before one of the Nerozansky proved. Constructed action of half of the Verzora algebra, and you can uh, embed that algebra into the bigger algebra. Okay, so this is the uh, one example. So you may ask why, what's the connection between uh, this sort of one of Rosansky cohomology and uh, uh, homology of those moduli spaces that Tamash introduced. And there are some hints. Maybe you can think about this. This uh, uh, one of homology is, should be sort of a homology of certain variety associated to the knot. 
and this should be sort of with some kind of wild character variety. But so far, I don't think people know how to push this analogy further. But in this particular case, you mentioned the same n plus one. I think the reason I've got the computer which is a huge difference number. So there are some examples, but it only recovers I guess two of the old variables. So some situations, yes. Hmm? Some situations. Some situations. For instance, there is a speed story um, uh, for algebraic nodes. Yeah. It is expected, this is conjecture. It is expected that the, this triply graded homology is basically some isomorphic to the homology of the compactified Jacobian nodes in the way. Okay, do you is it uh, expected that are the gradients? Because I only see two gradients of this function. Or maybe in the way two equation that right. the right. Sorry. And B2. There is degree homological degree on the way two equation. Oh, the main thing that the way two equation because yes, the two gradients are homology on the way two You said something about extending the various or algebra to this bigger algebra. Does this H2 contain the various or yeah, it contains half the various or I will write D and one from my D and one. You commute, you get the determinant is n minus n. Okay, dm plus okay, half the so on. n minus one. You block the whole thing because and your sort contains SO2, and this also contains SO2, but it's quite different. Exactly. Yeah. Oh. Maybe there's not now about some abstract real because thank you, not seen. Um, is the next. So here's another example. We consider, uh, let's consider a bit variety. So I can ask you about the previous thing. Yes. So you said you produce some operators. I, I don't understand. I mean, yeah. associated to arbitrary knots. I mean, yeah, it's supposed to extend what from the right. Well. So, on the, for any knot, you get this invariant, which is a strictly graded for one of the yeah. knot. And uh, you reconstruct some operators acting on. Uh, well, we are motivated to prove some other conjecture, not, not something else. But, but we do construct some new operators and we expect them to satisfy the relations of this special algebra. Which I don't know how to do. And it was asking, um, Gordon was asking, because you also have some um, part, um, uh, functional equation, some this sort of symmetry equation, in the sense of, uh, I must be in the sense of the theory establish. So yes. Right? I mean, I remember seeing yeah, this is what we do here. Yeah. Oh, okay. It proves the yeah. studios for one of the last two. And is it basically that um, that is the function of equation? Is it basically with variables or just saying something in between variables? Uh, oh, there it is. Uh, you can forget one of the variables. They're not interesting. Again, the same thing. It's, it's basically, it's it's basically, it's basically uh, you can write certain polynomials which correspond to your two variables. You want. They satisfy the same symmetry. So, okay, I can put it in. So, we took symmetry for certain two variables, one kind of polynomial. The mean is sent off. The curious questions. So, let's consider another case, uh, the case of a billion variety. Uh, and we take the consider cohomology ring. 
the linear ending. And uh, it has two natural structures. So it is a, is a ring, right? So as a ring, it is actually just uh, the exterior algebra uh, generated by some generators. Okay, I do not write like this. It's exterior algebra in G generators. If I've been writing this dimension, G, dimension G. but also it is a since the bin variety, my not two G. Oh, uh, but also as an abelian variety, it has a it's a group. So the uh, you know, uh, the homology uh, has a common no, wait, no so, so the homology has common implication. Uh, so, you mean the homology has convolution? Yes. Uh, uh, so, co-multiplication. Because we have the addition rule A times A to A. And by pullback, we can pull back homology. So, it's the most common multiplication. Which uh, if for any group you get the structure of pop algebra. This is well known. And so what you see is that uh, now so if uh, So this I need. So if uh, A has is principally polar polarized, then uh, there is so the cohomology of A is identified to uh, to the dual of the cohomology. and you can then construct. Uh, another multiplication multiplication and this is it's like a convolution like so you can think about functions on uh, the right and you can multiply functions so you can take convolution okay but then there is also uh, so you can write everything. So, so this induces some operators. So, so we have we have uh, operators of multiplying by xi i. So this will be denoted by let's say n i. But then we will have this other. Convolutions with uh, so this gives you some other operators and I okay, so and I will is going from H I to H A to H two plus one, but this uh, the convolution will give you operations. I don't know, let's say N I will be decreasing. And then uh, can also take the hard lashes. We give you some SL2 triple and uh, so and the homology. And you can see that uh, this SL2 is part of, uh, um, so we get some S matrix interchangeable. 
M I G M I. And um, then you can also relate it this to the Fourier Mechanical Transform. But just to, to wrap up, uh, I guess then I can uh, yeah. let's say uh, let's say it from from the beginning somewhat. So we have two classes of operators which form a super commutative algebra. So these are multiplication operators. They are related to Tamash's Wilson operators, and then you can think about this. Operators coming from convolution as uh, Hecke operators, like the, the kind of translation operators. And, and that's another commutative sub algebra. And then there is this F of two, which, which uh, permutes one. Then. So you get a similar algebraic structure. To the action of H2. So each one is committed in this MI something in it. So super committed. Yeah. What is super committed? Oh, the way well, this line. With this line. Yeah. Yeah. And what's the statement? So H2 affects some value? No, just uh, I have again two committed algebras and, and SO2. I think. What does it have to do with H2? Yes. I thought this was another example. Uh, so maybe, H2. Yeah. I... <sighs> right. Um, I just, no, I, I didn't study this more further to sort of say precise statement. The problem is that you initially act on things and you give us two examples. And these are set of examples. I meant it as an analogy, but I'm just starting to say it. Okay. Maybe it's a bit short. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. And now finally, another example. <laughs> Example of what? Just a of under the top. So in this, uh, I want to consider the Betjeman middle space and D, like in uh, Tamasha stuff, but. We have some modification. Um, we, namely, we want to introduce, so we have this curve C, and we pick a point. Some point C not uh, on the curve, and we consider the uh, so called parabolic character variety. Yeah. Parabolic character variety. Where we. Uh, uh, so these are the representations of the fundamental group of the complement. So this is. Uh, such phi g l m complex numbers such that phi uh, of the same small loop around z zero belongs to prescribed conjugacy class. So uh, just let's say conjugate to the diagonal matrix is. And this a one to a n zero zero like this, and this is all up to GL. 
Okay, that I A I surface to for pick Z zero and pick A one in M complex numbers and zero complex numbers. Okay, now um, this is our MD. And this uh, variety has, so we take cohomology. Study this thing. So this thing depends now on, on C and Z0. And that, what's it? Yeah, right. And B and I just sort of the play out of them. Yeah, and depends on all the says. Uh, yeah, if you want, I put it in one day. Well, so, this zero you fix the once and for all, but A you can consider as a parameter. Okay. Then uh, uh, you can think that after we introduce this uh, special point and uh, impose this condition, we put Two new structures on the cosmology. Namely, we can uh, now uh, the diagonal, so this matrix gamma T0 can be diagonalized. And the, the eigenspaces, they, they are one dimensional spaces. So they are lines. And uh, they produce uh, N line bundles on the model space. So the eigenspace for uh, phi gamma z zero produce n line bundles, which we do not L one after L n. Okay, and um, so multiplication by uh, multiplication by C one Li uh, is the commuting sequence of operators. Uh, commuting operators. On the cohomology. But then there is another structure. And uh, which is obtained as follows. Why do you keep start moving A's, the, the entries of A around? So we want to kind of, because this is a family of varieties, we will obtain the Picard Cook's uh, differential equation. Well, no, you said the bifold is just to come on the one dimensional eigenspaces and one dimensional values. So it seems to be independent of A. Right, they are independent. But this is now a completely different thing you can do. Forget for, about the line bundles. And simply consider this as a family of varieties parameterized by n tuple of complex numbers, and then differentiate along the, along the parameters. And so, so this is one piece of structure, which I call this one. Second is, uh, when we vary then this A produces monodrome action action. So we have obtain some operators, <coughs> some other operators. Uh, and and now phi one of the configuration space. Right, there is now phi one of the configuration space of this of this thing. So you want the AIs to remain yeah. different, right? Yeah. I never said that. The AIs are different. You never said that. I did. You did it. This thing. Oh, I didn't see. So Sorry. you have then this monotron operators, and then you check that the uh, commuting operators. And, and 
and then so wait wait what are they what is the one moving around a one and even the others are fixed right so it turns out that it's uh, sufficient to look at no so the a is going, going around zero <laughs> This uh, you will not you um well if you if you, if you permute them you will get the wild group action, but if you kind of don't if you start with some tuple A and then bring go back to the same tuple, you see that the, you, you get a trivial action you just uh, twist them twice. So the uh, statement is that. You get an action of the fine bound group. Mm -hmm. And you can see the lattice of the value. So I want to just the lattice. Mm -hmm. So, so sorry, but so how, how does, what are you acting? Is it the A? All the A's simultaneously move around zero? No, you, you can, for instance, fix uh, one, all but one. Yeah, and move around. Uh, and move around that one around you. And so the point is that how the the point is how you exactly you move around zero is not just one. The actual operator. This it still not make sense. So although you said there in C, it's C with more zero. It's not just C without zero. The AI star. But the AI is in C minus zero. Right, yeah. because the matrices are in GLN. They have to be. Oh, I see. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, A, I said C star. I thought you said C, maybe you said C star. Oh, yeah. Okay. So uh, we have um, these two kinds of commuting operators, and you can start asking can you play a similar game? Can we relate this one family to another? But you can immediately see that it's not uh, possible because the first kind of operators. Are uh, important, but notice that uh, one operators one, so L, uh, these operators one and I are important. Namely, you start with uh, some something in cohomological degree I, you get I plus two, and so on. Eventually, you go over the dimension of your variety and you get zero. But uh, this and I's are really important. Uh, well, so uh, why they are really important? Because yeah, they tend to be monodromic reactions. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't know if group is yet, yeah. but yeah, you can check that they are really important. Somehow you one way to see like in the model of wage registration and associated grid for the wage registration, the action should be again. So not quasi unit. They're right. actually unit. They're actually unit in this case. So uh, you cannot uh, relate the two, but probably you can relate by the exponential. So so you cannot hope that this uh, that this should be like so. So we think that so probably the algebra generated by by both is like is like uh, the trigonometric one. Version, right? And to get the other versions, you either have to exponentiate exponentiate the important operators, which means pass to the chunk characters instead of the chunk classes, and then hope that you get something nice, symmetric, or you should logarith take logarithm of the unicorn. So and then it's so. Also, hope to get rational or elliptic by 
exponential and uh, and uh, let me say just um, thing. Right, so the, the another observation. Let's look at symmetries of uh, C star times C star. This is a uh, real to Z. But if you start with C star times C, you don't know if it's a synthetic form. Yeah, let's say synthetic form. And um, then I have a good SLP. Then C star times C, uh, there is not so many symmetries. But once you go to C times C, then you immediately see where you, it, it is SLP R. And the expectation is that uh, right. So so oh, why so true? You say you see it immediately. I don't. I'm you just saying that there is SL two R acting on this space. Which SL two R, SL two C, okay, well, SL two C, but the so and um, okay. So. And, and if you have something with which will have action on of the elliptic algebra, then you will hope that by taking logarithm in each coordinate, you get something on which you have action of the rational. That is what we are going to do. This is a road. So then I wanted to. Is it the sense of it like because she has a character and it can come over to the other thing? Right, yeah. So one with one correspondence should be K theory and cohomology, but the other is more mysterious. So. Yes. Yeah. So then finally, let me finish with another example. <laughs> So we, uh, we we start how we started to think about this thing with Tamash. We take um, Tamash's uh, the relations in the ring of uh, uh, yeah relations in the cohomology ring. Difference in this for uh, two, right? So, so here the cohomology ring is generated by. Um, so there, here in this, uh, there is some other ring which is maybe more natural, and there is this polynomial ring in alpha, beta, and gamma. Uh, modulus and on well, alpha beta and psi. But wait, so is that all the psi perhaps? Uh, but never to G. Some uh, some real idea of G is uh, DT like this. Then uh, um, so uh, uh, I guess guess that H two X what I do like this to the following statement. So this idea is this one I mean I wrote a table. Yes, so it's the same one. Okay, same But this is gamma, I think the one that the big six class gamma. Because size size are then big C classes. So it's gamma I think. Okay. Right, and then I wanted to to write the separator here. So I um, 
I, I introduce the following integrator minus two beta the alpha the beta plus b alpha minus alpha two alpha minus four gamma the alpha the gamma minus gamma two gamma G over two, beta two gamma, and then to this. Right. So, so this idea depends on G, which can be calculated as three G minus three. There is some version which incorporates another quotation. Okay, yeah, but. Right, so there is this differential operator, and then uh, this L preserves, preserves JD and the computer experiment shows that JD is generated by uh, L and classes. Of degree uh, given dimension. So um, this is a cohomology of the space. The space has the dimension, and so the of course everything high above the dimension must be zero. But then if you apply L, uh, you get all relations out of trivial relations. And what's interesting here for me was that we had infinitely many relations online, like many sectors for non system they have three relations, but they are complicated the accuracy because here we have explicit relations, but then infinitely many for, for no boundary. And then those relations are somehow against the dictionary to just be single. Right, yeah. So that point is that you have a right single operator and then you get the other thing. And where does this operator come from? Just from the experiment or is it... this is operator is D two uh, zero. <laughs> so one of the and zero two is uh, zero two is one of the topological classes. So I will tell you about, more about what, what exactly the algebra. So this is this is before we prove we proved the total action of the cell. And, uh, and the next, I'm going to talk to tell you how to construct the action of the algebra. In particular, obtain a proof, geometrical proof that this operator L preserves the ideal of the relation. Okay, so you want this is. Yes, yeah, someone to stop. Okay, so do you have some questions? More questions? Okay, can you explain the last thing a little more? I mean, so suddenly this is D, and then suddenly D was 3G minus 3, maybe plus some unspecified K, and the idea this is specified. How big is this? So, so they are not dimensional. I mean, it's. Can you follow up? So the, uh, the idea is, uh, is, is given as some. But you, you know, it is in your paper. I mean, it's the same idea. Yes. No, not the same idea. But Except, yeah. Use your idea of the computation. Our, our relations are explicitly given as uh, those some yolks are being read to the uh, recursively. But you only have three of the relations, and we have use your relations to prove the statement that this is the ideal equation. This is what I thought. But it has another, it has a complete idea also. Yeah, yeah, that idea is contained among the sums. One of them, yours, contains this one. And this is like it starts twice as big. But first, is this closely finite dimension? Yes. Yeah. And what's the dimension? Well, it's roughly, uh, you don't have to the form. So, 
Well, but the notation for complete W. It's the same itself, the same concrete that we saw. So, so what is this? The module is with, oh, yeah, yeah, it's related to, to the one I showed you. So, what is D? Is the master's D or what is D? D is 3G minus 3. Right, three but it before three. it was that, what it was D? So, the D is in the, in the end? No? Yeah, D is a, D is a half, dim, half dimension, right? So, uh, so GD is 16 minus 6. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we, so, this is any is equal to 2 here. Yeah. So, it's, it's not the previous D. This is why It's not. Tamas is talking for n equals to 2 would be 1. That would be the only D. So, this is completely different. Too. So, D is the dimension. Yeah, yeah, 3G minus 3 is the dimension of the 3G minus 6 yeah. is the dimension of and the dimension is dimension which is 2D. So you um, on one side you look at this paper and then you see that there is this idea which is given uh, by for any ij k satisfying certain inequalities, you write some sum with binomial things. Some binomial sum, this is alphas, betas, and gammas. And uh, the other hand, we generate this idea by just saying, well, by this operator L as many times as you want to any, any element of degree greater than 2D. And you get the same idea of well, computers suggested that we really get all the relations. But in, uh, in some other cases, that's, this, uh, that's a conjecture, it's not a fact. You, your conjecture here is that uh, JD is generated by L and classes. Yeah, so that's not so the facts, only computer is fact. It's a fact is that it's because of JD. Computer, is that JD is generated by it. And it's the same we observed in rank three. Can you say something more about the framework I transposed the biology? Sorry, what? Yeah. Could you say something more about the, the example of the Abelian variety that you mentioned the framework I transposed? Mm -hmm. For the um, so you should, you should think about this. Yeah. Right. So maybe yeah, maybe I should say the following: that if you um, so you have this Hitchin system, and uh, expectation is that this cons our construction of this action will uh, work uh, for arbitrary for all fibers in the system of the Hitchin system. In particular, on uh, abelian varieties, you should recover this uh, this structure, which I'm not. Telling you precisely how related to H2. So you should recover the structure for the abelian variety in fibers of the Hitchin system. And another point, maybe I should point out that Polish Shuk mm -hmm. I don't know how to write it in the SFC option. So he constructs, uh, well, not quite, but almost this H2 on um, for family, for families of smooth curves, which you convert it to the family of Jacobians. Jacobians. And then you have the again the two kinds of operators and the Shukari Fukuya Mukai transformer relating them. So he has this similar structure. But I haven't studied this very well. That is relating to the hypercolor. I don't know. No. 
Okay, then uh, following our procedure, then we take a break. There's coffee there, the dog we love. Same place. And we come back, uh, let's say 2.30 okay. for a little bit more. Um, for those who want to. Yeah, the three minutes. No, uh, three thirty. Three thirty. Three thirty. Huh? Yeah, so it's three fifteen. Oh, so we can't come back at three thirty. No, that would be nice, but no. <laughs> I was not. Was because I was already doing for ten years. I had applied my first part, first lecture is the situation and second is the proofs. Yeah, I made it now, right? You mean the second tomorrow or the second now? No, tomorrow. No, tomorrow. Well, I told Anton he, he could make this as long as he needed, but not longer. And so it should be on the cross. So there is Cory Einstein. It's as simple as what he was. So we have those elements. Okay, <laughs> strange Okay, and then it's a bit of a weird one. I, uh, it's not one over C, one is not that one. It's just I, it's just I and at KG. And it was here. So I, KG is generated by. Is this is really correct. The C minus I is the unit. Is that all right? Second, please. I said, is the formula correct? The C minus I factorial is not in this one, or is it should be? It is correct. And this I mean, every form I've seen in my life in combinatorics, you can just put I goes to infinity, and the coefficients stop. So if I is bigger than R, bigger than S, the coefficient is zero, it gets negative. If the C minus I, it wouldn't stop, it would get bigger and bigger. So there's something very odd. Right, but C is this horrible complete thing, right? Yeah, but it doesn't matter, it's still it's balanced. So you have one factorial on top, three factorials in the bottom, but the sum of these factorials in the bottom is also something minus sign. Well, it's not well, it's not balanced because C is not R plus S. Um, this, okay, so I see this thing to be the same. But why do you stop it? Stop. There's a K, where's the K coming? Right, and this is, this is generate IKJ. And then the statement is that the, the cohomology is. And yeah, here you, this means that you take this into G invariant part. No, no, what is this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. So,
Oh, but n, n is zero, right? Otherwise, it would decrease with the right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. And then, well, this this part, so the mode is generated by, so gamma is the sum of sine i sine i. G. And then the ring is generated by size uh, alpha, beta, so h star generated by psi one, psi two g and h three, right? Um, Alpha is in H two and beta H two and beta is H four. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the H four is so lambda means uh, you take uh, polynomials and uh, all the symmetric polynomials in the psi classes. Oh, um, yeah. Degree K. Degree K. So you see that somehow dependence on psi uh, is somehow just factored out. You have only one here, you have only functions on alpha, beta, and gamma, which is the which is generate, which generates the invariant three under the uh, sp2, sp2g action. If there is a sp2g action acting uh, on the psi, so the gamma is invariant, and then. So this is the interesting thing, but then also three variables on. And then uh, this is zero relations. As given in the paper of function values. So yeah, do you have any questions or should I I I'm not thinking about telling you some more stuff? Namely how to get the differential operator. So the presume it's compatible with these relations in some way. Oh we kind of I mean, if you fly L to this PRST, see, you get something. Mm, yeah, but I don't know. So what we have is, uh, I checked on the computer that ideal is preserved and that uh, it is generated by this L. But on the other hand, now we have a proof that this H2 algebra is, and from that, you can extract the operator. So the proof doesn't go through what you mean. This example doesn't, it's not part of the proof. No, no, no. It's so my how like an education. H2. So how did the how does the rest of H2 act? And this is only D20. Right. So what's, what's D73? Is it explicit or actually? So what we do have is the following that um, the statement. That if you take um, so H two and the homology ring of C, this is a super. Is now a super real algebra. And it acts, but not quite on the homology ring of moduli space, it acts on 
and the same thing with two x and two x variables, form of variables x and y. And and which one is it? Uh, this is the question of the problem. This is what C2 by H2. And uh, this is the region of the one you have to know to find this H2 actually the beginning. So, uh, and now we want to, okay, so we have polynomial rings in two variables over the topology, and we have this one, big H. So, to be right, uh, for, uh, for psi in, uh, in the homology of the curve, we write D and N of psi. For the corresponding standard problem. Then, then the relations become prime, 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 prime. This commutator is just n prime, uh, prime n minus n n prime times d n plus n prime minus one. Plus minus one of the product. So there is a special thing we, we have that d zero one so we have d zero one and uh, d one zero Oh, yeah, so we have some extra sign to because more is distributed. Right, but whenever I, when I write it this way, oh. it doesn't know it's the same. But the commutator is like actually not the commutator, it is a super commutator. So what's x like psi prime? So this is for any, uh, so by psi, I denote the elements in the cohomology of the curve. But it's not very big, it stops at H2. So it has H0. And but you mean the cup product here, but you don't mean the sum. Yeah, yeah the cup product here. Yeah. This is just a deviation for the cup product. So H star C has basis one, then point. Which I usually denote by omega. Okay. And then uh, the class is one gamma one and so on up to gamma g. And this you can insert in this uh, DMN. When you insert one, you get a copy of uh, H2, but when you insert, uh, then you insert other classes to get some kind of extra stuff, which is uh, somewhat. An important addition. <laughs> no, I don't know. So, so kind of way. Uh, once you want for instance, if you have something non, non trivial here, then forming all computators will give you again something positive degree. And eventually, you will start getting zeros. And then uh, let's. Another thing is, uh, and what super commutator? Is well, there is a sign and super commutator of some A and B. It's A B and plus minus and the minus plus on the A. Then we have minus it. Then we have plus it. Both of them are over. So, um, so kind of you start parsing uh, this algebra from the smallest part, from small degrees, things, and then you uh, discover. So, um, this commutator is Z is equal to zero omega. Now I, I should give you this piece of information that D zero M psi is uh, um, 
So it's a tautological class coming from John um, character of the of the tautological bundle and then you multiply it by so you look at the so E is on model space times the curve. And then you can multiply it by psi on the curve, and then you push it down to n. And this way you get one one community about it. Then psi, you can ask what is what is d what is d zero zero? Well, you see that I have to take zero term class, zero term character, so zero term character of, of my bundle, which is the run of the bundle. Then I multiply by a class of the point on the curve. So we get this run, and this run times the point on the curve. And then I push it forward to M with this component. So I simply get the run as a constant. So, so this is the two in this case. So you see that you have a copy of the of the while algebra, right? Because the uh, commutator equals two. And similarly, you get so we obtain d zero one, d one zero omega equals two, and then you can also do the other way. D Zero, D, zero, one, plus minus two. So our algebra uh, has two, well, tensor by, by the modulus of the curve, has two. Well, in the in the representation, it will have these two y algebra setting. Therefore, you, you see that you cannot have finite dimensional representations. On the other hand, every time you have some wild algebra sitting somewhere, you can just canonically factor it out. Situations like this. So you will in fact have that y will be given by. So what's the statement that implies what? Yes. So while D seven has two other options. And therefore no finite dimensions. And therefore no finite dimensional representation. But we are not asking it to have finite dimensional representation. Remember, we have this H star of and two variables. That's why we really need these two variables. So T, the variables identified with these operators. So Y Right. So you can think that differentiation with respect to y is uh, you can define it like uh, minus one 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 zero. 
the differentiation with respect to the x. This is one. This is zero one. So now you have, suppose you have this, um, right, and all of this acts on, the, on this stuff. Therefore, you can canonically write it as a, so using these two algebra actions, we decompose uh, this as, as a tensor product of, of this thingy and the polynomial. Two variables where this is by definition identified with uh, those uh, elements which are killed by uh, by the x and y. Okay, and then we also inside the algebra we find there is a way to. Um, so this algebra H2 ends up with the homology ring of the curve. Also, it's written canonically as a some smaller algebra. So small, and then you have this x, y, the x, dy. So this is by definition the centralizer of, of this x, y, the x, dy. Okay, so this is um, it's general framework of wire algebra. If you have some algebra, you can spend it with way. Uh, then, we have four more resolutions. Um, I don't know. Well, well, in this, yeah, and then there is also some kind of proper representation. Okay, so uh, and then and then this smaller algebra is on on this. But it is much. It is. It's more difficult to write down the, uh, the relations. So x on on the cohomology. Okay. And then we uh, prove that so the fact that. It is generated. Ah, well, I forgot one thing, one more thing. So also you can factor out that uh, in zero one gamma i sigma zero gamma i plus g. Uh, also, this is a So, but now this is an odd element, and this is odd element, and there is a non anti commutative commutator, which so this basically tells you that you can also factor out all these uh, these uh, elements, which actually come from uh, this okay, come from the map from uh, the uh, M B to to the Jacobian. So we are looking at the GL2 module space in the original framework. But if you want, you can also so you can also factor out the odd biology just in a similar way. And then so and you get even smaller part. So then it is generated by by uh, stuff like H. Zero m t psi. These are this this tautological classes. Yeah. 
and the and the operator d to zero of one. So this you mean h too small? Yeah, there's there was small as one, I guess. And then so so now we have obtained that uh, the following statement that this uh, becomes the following. So this means that so on uh, so on uh, uh, the this alpha theta gamma model is an ideal. We have action of of this operators multiplication by uh, multiplication by alpha multiplication by theta multiplication by gamma and some operator l which corresponds to to this d to zero one okay so and we want to say that uh, we want to extract some information about it. And then you compute and double. So first you see that start uh, commit, you compute this kind of commutators. So um, this is some computation in the algebra and so on. And you see that also that uh, and this are again. Each time there are certain uh, polynomials in alpha theta gamma. So for example, right? So the triple commutators will vanish. So L has, has is a differential operator of degree two. This you check you in the because uh, you see that you start with D two zero. Commuted with any of these, you get something with one in the first position. You commute second time, you get zero in the second position, in the first position. And then uh, if you commute again, you get zero. So it's a degree of, of degree two. And you compute explicitly all the all the double commutators. Okay, and then you write, therefore, uh, you have the L minus. So if you write this, for instance, it was C alpha alpha, and you subtract C alpha alpha over two, D D alpha, D D alpha, and so on. So you you want to after you took this, you obtain take this, you obtain operator now which whose double commutators uh vanish. So you can compute first commutators and uh, proceed. So you, after this, you obtain that L minus certain explicit differential operator. Uh, it, it commutes with and alpha and beta and gamma and vanishes on one in the cohomology. And therefore, it must be identically zero because cohomology is generated by the logic of classes. So, therefore, L is given by the explicit potential of L. And in particular, uh, since L of zero is zero, it must send the idea of two directions. In this way, you put the explicit differential operator to some sort of relation. In our relations, these P, R, S, G, C, you gave us. Right. So, can't you just apply L to set and check that it's combination of them? That would be possible, but that wouldn't generate. But this, 
Here, the behavioral procedures that can be applied for rabbit that you can't. So that's only for rank two. Okay. Uh, maybe quick question before we go. Now we are allowed to clap. So let's thank uh, Anton and also Thomas. We resume tomorrow at 10. Thank you, everybody online. See you tomorrow.